Boy, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. Also, good morning because I just woke up. So today I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know what build I'm going to be playing for the Arcage Fresh Start launch. Now, I would like to put a big disclaimer out here and state that I'm not taking this build from anybody. This is what I want to play, and it's mainly just because I want to play it and I think it's good. I'm not following the meta. I'm not specifically doing what the meta says. I'm not this is just me learning the game again right if you guys remember this is kind of how i learn I, I don't really learn by researching i learn by making my build fucking up and then improving myself and applying things and arcade is the type the type of game where you can honestly respect your class trees all the time and you don't really have to worry about that part it's mainly the gear that you don't want to fuck up anyway with that being said let's go ahead and start talking about the character so i want to play a revenant now a revenant in in meta terms essentially is a raid versus raid spec it's meant for a large scale pvp uh it's got a couple of different ways you can spec it you can decide to go like tank revenant you can go dps revenant you can go like suicide revenant we're going to be like a little bit of mixture of everything uh, the reason why i'm aiming towards this class is it's got decent mobility it's got some sustain it's got a lot of cc uh it's a very it, i mean i would say it's a bursty class but there's much much stronger burst classes but I would like to say that for its utility, it's got a lot of burst damage. Um, and it's got the flexibility of still being able to 1v1, being able to grind really well, being able to AoE really well, um, and potentially still being able to have a presence in pretty much everything that I do. So, let's get started. It's a sorcery, occultism, or a mancy build. I will be avoiding Malediction for the first like week, maybe first month, just because it's going to be really overplayed with Malediction Sword. I wanted to try something new. So, um, I'm just going to go kind of like one row at a time and talk about the skills that I get. Now remember, there are so many skills in Arc Age, and it's impossible to take all of the good combinations. So before you blast me in the comments of why I'm not taking X and X, just remember, you cannot get everything. It's not possible. And if you don't like it, click Respec, spend 5 silver, and you're good to go. So, uh, <clears throat> we're going to go with Firebolt. It's pretty much your spam. It's pretty much how you're going to level. If you ever panic under any scenario, you spam Firebolt because you're new, and that's okay, right? Uh, Crippling Mire is pretty good, but we're not going to get it at the beginning. Definitely an option for respecting into, but at the beginning, you can take it because you need more damage skills, but later on, we're not really going to take it. Thwart, amazing. Phenomenal skill. You click it, you get a 5,000 damage bubble. The bubble breaks after one damage, but can be used while you're incapacitated and has a reduced effect on your global cooldown, which means... If, say, said character charges you and trips you, you click Thwart immediately. Thwart reduces their skill damage by 20%, guts their attack speed by a huge amount, and gives you a bubble for the incoming next hit. A good player will play around Thwart, <clears throat> however, a good Thwart player will play around the player playing around it. Basically, it just comes down to skill. In the early stages of leveling, this skill is absolutely hilarious because you'll see a mage sitting in the back, channeling like Arc Lightning, which is like a huge hit. You just click Thwart. It's 5k, no problem. Uh, it will fall off a bit later when damage is much stronger than 5,000. However, even reducing 5,000 damage later on is still pretty phenomenal. Okay, going to the next one. Freezing Arrow. Also your bread and butter for leveling. Basically, you know, spamming 1 and 2. Uh, you Freezing Arrow, you spam Fireball, the target's going to die. Uh, Absorb Life Force. Something that I would definitely grab. Um, Absorb Life Force is cool because it's got a number of things. Now, in practice, this seems really good. In reality, I'm not 100% sure how good it is. So number one, it does an okay amount of magic damage. Number two, uh, it heals you 13% of your max health. Not the main reason to take it, but something nice for sure we can't deny, right? The third part is, if the target moves 20 meters from you, they get stunned for three seconds. Now, there are scenarios, I believe, where you could like put down a magic circle um, and then use your teleport, teleport away, and then immediately snap back and teleport to your magic circle, and you would get a stun off. I don't really think that's worth doing, but hypothetically it gives you an option. It's also nice because since Revenant is can be like a melee caster type, like if you're going against another caster, you can pretty much bully them and go melee because of the spec. Uh, and if you force them to teleport, you can get a guaranteed stun off your absorbed life force. Now, moving on. Um, Comet Spoon. Comet Spoon is something I would take early level, and I'm pretty sure I would drop it later. Super crazy movement speed steroid. Also does okay damage for an insta-cast skill. Remember, Oromancy is our utility slash stay alive tree. So this is something I'd grab leveling, and then I respect later. 
So insulating lens, same thing. I'd grab it during the leveling phase, but I will personally drop it later. Play dead you don't touch unless you're doing a combo with Death's Vengeance, or if you're doing something with PvE that requires a TLDR, very niche. Uh, conversion Shield. Conversion Shield's really nice. So some of these have been changed in the actual um, Arcajan chain, so Conversion Shield will be 25% of magic damage received is converted to health on a 8 second duration with a 20 second cooldown. So it's like 40% uptime. Pretty, pretty good in my opinion. Um, however, in theory, maybe it's not that good, but I think it's pretty fucking solid. Moving on, Arc Lightning. Your number one panic button when you're leveling. You don't know what you're doing, someone attacks you in PvP, you CC him, you pop Magic Circle, you use Arc Lightning. If they don't stun you, or they don't interrupt you, or they don't kill you, you probably just won the low level duel. Um, moving on, we've got Shadow Step. Shadow Step is something you will not take until a later on combo, but if you want more mobility, go ahead and grab it. Teleport, super awesome, definitely grab it. So as this unlocked the three, we now grab Vicious Implosion. Vicious Implosion is actually a very hard hitting utility skill that pulls targets in within 10 meters and applies a minus healing effect on them and will also interrupt them if they're casting. This is a good interrupt because you don't have to target it. So if you're, again, for people who are panicking a little bit or, and I know I say this term a lot, but Archage gets very fast paced later on. Um, and having things like this really does make a difference. Vicious Implosion is just PB AOE, you pull targets in. Really good for PVE, really good for PVP, really good to use in between as a filler skill, like you can weave skills together, like basically you channel Arc Lightning, and then you slap them with the Arc Lightning, and then because, you know, the way the channel works, if you're channeling a skill for one second, your global cooldowns are ticking while you channel, which means your global cooldowns are up, your Arc Lightning hits, you can use an Instacast skill right away. Um, also really good for PvE, because when you're doing your questing, a lot of the time they'll tell you to kill like a 30,000 health boss. Nothing very scary, but as a caster you might be a bit squishy. So you would put down your magic circle, which you'll stay in. This is basically your bread and butter for nuking someone and or leveling. You put down the magic circle, you hit him with the frost bolt, you hit him with a flame bolt, which activates a combo for arc lightning. Then you keep spamming your flame bolt most likely. The target gets close to you, so what do you do? You use teleport, so you blink 30... You bring what is it 15 meters yeah 15 meters forward you can at that point use your absorb life force apply freezing arrow again hit them with flame bolt when they're close to you tap that vicious implosion which pulls them closer to you and then use magic circle teleport all the way back and you've only used two mobility skills and the target hasn't hit you once yet this is not for pvp this should not happen in pvp because people are really dumb if it does it can happen against new players but that's mainly for like the leveling phase of how to use that juke um Freezing Earth is something really good, but I don't take it for my build because we're going to go Frigid Tracks for a combo. Uh, moving on to Boneyard. Boneyard is a really good skill, as I am going to get attacked a lot as a streamer. Uh, Boneyard is good for splitting up a 2v2. So, for example, you could like CC one guy, teleport away, someone follows you, they're separated, Boneyard. That gives you an extra couple seconds to basically assess the situation. Boneyard blocks people in, and on top of it blocking people in... What are we listening to? I don't know, I've never heard of that for Arcage. We're just gonna switch back. All right, so uh, Boneyard, essentially, you can encase people in. Now, you don't necessarily wanna be blocked in with a melee. This is more so either bullying a caster or bullying a ranged, um, so you can stay in the Boneyard with them, or for essentially separating, you know, just evening the field and kind of separating people. It is important to note that if you're inside a Boneyard with somebody, you can technically use Vicious Implosion and pull them if they try to escape. So the two ways of escaping a Boneyard is number one, you walk up to the wall, you press F, which is your action key, and you break it. If it's a small wall, you have to hit it twice because there's like two you need to move. If it's a big one, you just hit it once and you can escape. Or the more popular way is you just double tap spacebar and hit your boost, which will activate your glider and boost you out. If you are really fucking quick, like really quick, you can actually Vicious Implosion and pull someone off their glider before they start their boost and bring them back into the, the bone yard. Anyway though, moving on. Uh, flame Barrier is something we're gonna grab but not until Ancestral, and Ancestral we're not gonna be covering in this video because this is the leveling of like 1 to 50 slash 55. When I learn more, I'll release a more updated guide which will probably be in like a couple of days. 
So, uh, no flame barrier for now. Uh, crows, I don't take crows until I can grab Hellspear. But crows itself is not necessarily bad. I just think they combo really well with Hellspear. Uh, so I am going to boom that point into Boneyard there. So now as for Courageous Action. Courageous Action is really good, but the problem with Courageous Action, it's actually been changed now. Um, let me see exactly what it says here. I'm using two builders, but this, this builder here, the problem is it doesn't show the requirements for skills here. Um, so this gives you immunity to a bunch of shit, but if you're new to the game, you probably won't understand when to use the immunity, so I don't recommend it. The nice thing about it is it combos with your conversion shield, and when it combos with conversion shield, it gives you a huge magic damage buff. Um, actually, no, wait, never mind. They switched it to Shrug It Off. Sorry. It switched to Shrug It Off, which is the, the one we do get. Shrug It Off is an actual CC break, whereas Courageous Action is to prevent from getting CC. Um, also, Meditation is here. Meditation is something you would grab for purely PvE purposes. You basically can just save money on mana potions, and, you know, entirely up to you. So I would grab your Shrug if you plan on comboing it. Otherwise, you don't really want to put a point in. Now, I'm going to take this moment here to really quickly talk about the passives that we've unlocked. So in Sorcery, you've unlocked 35% max mana. Decreased cast time of Sork skills by minus 8%. Uh, Mind Over Matter is decreased duration of silences by 30%. And then Mana Fountain, which essentially gives us a steroid of towards damage uh, whenever you use your Magic Circle, uh, Insulating Lens, etc. And for the most part, it is... Decreased cast time by minus 10% and bonus attack speed. I don't know what the phys decreased physical defense means. I don't know if that actually makes us more squishy. That part I honestly didn't even know of. And some of these values may not be 100% correct because there's so many calculators and each one is like kind of missing something. All right, to speed this up a little bit, right now I've only got unnatural speed. It's reduced cast time and plus attack speed. Attack speed affects your global cooldowns directly, so very good. Next up, absorb damage. Um, this essentially has been changed to look like this now, or basically you just, it just has a chance to, whenever you take damage, just heal you over time. It's just basically for sustain. It's not bad at all. Uh, decrease fear and sleep effects by 20%. Fear is all in witchcraft, so that's really good. Um, unassailable is very RNG, but whenever it procs, you get a two second immunity. And then ward mastery makes it so when you press thwart, instead of having one stack, you have two stacks. So two instances to block the damage. All right, so going on, uh, like I said, flame barrier we don't touch until ancestral. Chain lightning is not bad, but I've, I personally don't want to use insulating lens chain lightning combo. This combo sets up a 1.5 second stun, but in my build we're gonna have an arsenal of crowd control. That's why I don't want to put the two points here. Um, searing rain is also really good for PVE, but we're not gonna take it for right now. Uh, moving on, let me just put a point into. Well, I guess we're gonna get this, but after. Uh, so to talk about, I guess, the rest of them, we don't really take anything else in Oromancy. Um, the reason why is Banishment is really situational. Protective Wings is, like, meant for support as a raid, but I'm not playing a support. Bracing Blast is not bad to push an enemy away, but, again, this is situational. It's really hard to understand exactly when I would need to use it. Health Lift is not bad, because it gives 4,000 flat life, which is kind of like... I mean, you're probably going to have like 15,000 health, maybe like 12k, maybe 18k day one. This is still a nice buff to your health. Um, but I only have five points, so I'd probably have to drop like Shrug for it or something. So moving on into Occultist now, um, I pretty much don't grab anything else until Summon Wraith. Summon Wraith is a really big AoE channel that, you, well, I don't know if it's really big, but it's an AoE channel that you can do that slows like their movement speed, attack speed, and cast speed. You can essentially use your Boneyard, and you can cast area skills onto the Boneyard, but Boneyard itself line of sights everything. But you can, so technically what you can do is, you can Boneyard someone from a distance, and you can essentially do like Summon Wraith on top of them, and you'll probably get like a few hits off before they realize something. On the flip side, you can do this combo that I'm about to show you, uh, where, so I'm going to drop Insulating Lens now, and I'm going to drop Chain Lightning, and I'm going to go Frigid Tracks, Meteor Strike, God's Whip, and then we're going to go Shadow Step, which unlocks Hell Spear, and Crows. And that puts us at 765. So Frigid Tracks is a buff that you use that gives you uh, Icy Footprints. After using that, you can initiate with Shadow Step, so you apply a Icy Footprint underneath the target. If the target's moving or doesn't get a stack of it, immediately tap your Vicious Implosion. Now it's important to note, you use this which uses your global cooldown, but then refreshes because of the cast time. Shadow Step does not actually trigger global cooldown, I believe. 
and then you can immediately instantly pull the target with vicious implosion onto the foot trap or the footstep then you've got freezing arrow which is now comboed with your frigid tracks which makes it instant if you read the bottom eliminates the cast time which then sets up a deep freeze because deep freeze sets it up so you have uh inflicts deep freeze on the target who is already under a freezing effect and the freezing effect is from your frigid tracks for your first stack so that sets up a deep freeze which will be like a probably like a five second freeze in pvp which allows you to do essentially meteor strike or arc lightning or any big hit and a lot of this is for early game i'm still talking about for late game you do a lot of respecking depending on what you're fighting and you know essentially what the meta is uh, and the goal of that is to force a cc break so you can roll your next combo which is basically going to be like Hell Spear, which triggers an Impale, and Impale disables them from doing actions, into a Summon Crows, which reduces their accuracy by 60% for casters and melee. And then while you're in melee, you've got the option of using like Absorb Life Force, uh, you've got the option of teleporting whenever you want, you've got the option of using your Thwart to reduce their damage and buff yourself. If you're trapped in there with a Mage, you've got Conversion Shield. Uh, remember, if you're fighting a melee, you still have the ability to kite, you can run away. Um, so that's kind of like the bread and butter of what I'm doing right now, which is, you know, to go over the combo again, it's basically going to be like Frigid Tracks into Backstep, Vicious Implosion, Freezing Arrow, which sets up Deep Freeze into Next Setup, Channel a Meteor, Channel an Arc Lightning, they'll probably CC Break, roll into your next set of combos. Um, there's also God's Whip, which is a new thing that was introduced from when I played. God's Whip is extremely strong, however, with the Ancestral skills, it becomes even stronger. Same thing with Meteor, since both of these can become Instacast via your Ancestral. But it's hard to talk about these skills right now because it's been a long time since I've used them. I'm going to be completely honest with you. So going over the passives once again for things that we've unlocked, we've now unlocked uh, Air to Ionad, which gives us 10% damage from Sork skills, and Sorcery Adept, which gives us 9% crit rate, unless they've been changed. I think they actually have been changed a little bit. It doesn't necessarily matter too much. Uh, we've got Death's Beckoning, which every time an enemy is damaged by Crippling Mire or Absorb Life Force, you reduce the cooldowns of Occultism by 1%. This is not really the most important, which gives you a point in Sorcery to kind of move around if you want to. Uh, and then we already talked about everything we got in Oromancy. So that's pretty much the leveling stages of the character. Um, and then you will respec, you know, like I said, I will put out another video later as I actually play through the character and see what I want to go ahead and remove. Most likely Arc Lightning is getting removed for Flame Barrier at Ancestral, but let's go on to the gear. Now the gear is kind of important uh, and you do have flexibility. I'm not telling anyone to play my way. I'm just letting you guys know what I'm going to be doing. So when you first start the game, you can choose between cloth, leather, or plate. I am going to be going full cloth. Um, the reason for full cloth is one, it gives you a 20% reduction of all debuffs. Two, it reduces casting delay when hit. I don't think that really matters that much for me, um, but it's whatever. You also get 3% movement speed. Then you get the shield effect because we're going to be going scepter and shield. Um, Scepter and shield is nice because you can always swap the shield to like any type of weapon which creates dual wield for you and since you're primarily instacasts, I mean you're just basically reducing your global cooldown. If you wear staff as full cloth, you're going to be super squish and that's just not really what I want. So as for the gear stats, uh, again, if I feel that something needs to change, I'll put out a video later and I'll explain it. But as for the stats, it's pretty straightforward for most characters I believe. We're going to be rocking intel on every piece. We're going to be rocking melee damage reduction where we can because pretty sure Shadow Smite can just one tap you. And then we get resilience wherever we can and wherever we cannot get resilience, you want toughness. So one of them is flat damage reduction and one of them is reduced critical damage, I think. Um, but again, pretty much every build uses a combination of these three stats. You just mix and match. So if you're played, instead of doing melee damage reduction, you would do magic damage reduction, right? Um, so you pretty much play against your weakness. You can see when I go down this gear, this is all gear that is very realistic to have at the beginning. It's just basically Arcane Hiram, which I think is right after your level 50 quest line. Now, as for the rest of the gear that I want to talk about, this I cannot give my personal recommendation on. This basically, Chat and I were kind of building the character and kind of seeing what my early game expectations should be. So uh, 
we basically came to the conclusion that the proven warrior necklace that you can get i don't remember exactly where you get it i think it has something to do with the halcyona pvp though this is really good because it upgrades a ton uh it gives you stamina and reduces damage taken then these are wave earrings that you can get early on. I don't remember what you do, but there's a quest line that gives you the currency to buy these. It reduces damage taken by 1.3%. Um, then you can also technically get like wave rings, but I decided against it because this ring here, this crimson watch ring, you can actually get right away. It's from, it's also from a quest, so it's not like there's a crazy grind for it. This one you have to grind a bit for, uh, but it's it's definitely worth it. Now I think. This is upgraded with Honor. I don't remember if anything else is upgraded with Honor. Now that pretty much covers most of what I could tell you guys, like I said. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below, but please don't grill me too hard. Remember, it's been literally five years since I've played this game, so I'm going in kind of blind. You know, I've only researched a little bit, um, but I really just want to kind of learn the experience for myself, make my own mistakes and learn from them, because that's where the Dagger Spell content came from that you guys wanted a couple of years ago, you know? Um, last thing, let me know which uh, which character you guys think looks the best. So we're going to start with number one and go all the way to, what is this, five? So we've got number one over here. Uh, we got number two over here. Uh, we're going through number three over here. Just got them hips don't lie, dude. Number four and then number five. Let me know which, which one you guys think is the most goofy or I guess which one you like the most. Um, like I said, we'll talk about Ancestral in the next video, but for now, I'm out. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves, and I'll see you guys on the Fresh Start, Fresh Start server tomorrow. So take care, have a wonderful time, and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox.